Hello everyone, I am Erica of MeetingSchool.com and you are watching No One Has To Be The Lone, my weekly free beading workshop to make sure that every beader around the world has company. You can watch this workshop from the Beading School Facebook Club or from the Beading School Facebook page and later we will also upload it to YouTube so you can watch it again and again or you can watch it later if you are busy when it's happening in real time. Please let me know if you can hear me, if you can see me. I see Kata. Hi Kata. I see a Facebook user friend. If you are watching from the Bidding School Club, then you might need to click on the link that is just above the video to enable my broadcasting program to see your face and see your name. And then I can say, hi, Katty. Katty hears me and can see me. If she can hear me and see me all the way to Belgium, then I hope that all is well all around the world. Aniko is here. Erika is here. Faye is here. Uh, Brit Marie. Take it easy, Brit Marie, if you're tired. Sarah, Christine, Marta is here. Jessica, Daniela, Antoinette. Other Facebook user friend. If you don't hear your name, then it means that I don't see your name or face. I like to greet everyone who says hi. So if I don't see your name, uh, if I don't say your name, then I don't see your name. <laughs> Claire, Elena, Nancy. Good morning or good afternoon or good evening to everyone, depending on the time of the day that is is well at your place cindy is here jan is here corinne is here also hello everyone honey marianne patty hope everyone is doing all right today we are going to bead another beautiful pattern from my friend and colleague zuzi Zuzi really, Zuzi just joined us. She says hi. So, <laughs> Zuzi is really stepping up with her designing lately, and it's the second week in a row that, uh, that we can beat together a nice pair of earrings designed by Zuzi. And I'm really enjoying it. And today we are going to be the marigold earrings. And I love how Zuzi solved the bicons on the edge all around. So I, I think you will really enjoy beading it. If you haven't done it yet, then you can download the printable file, the PDF tutorial from no one has to be the .com to make sure that you can follow the workshop comfortably. You can, as always, choose between a free or a support version. The free version you need to download and save to your computer within three days. On Monday, it disappears. And uh, yeah, you had a homework also that since we start with the peyote bezel, then I asked you that please bezel the cabochon, the rivoli or the chaton in advance. We are working with an eight millimeter, with an eight millimeter chaton or uh, rivoli. It doesn't matter if it's gloss or preciosa. You can actually even start with a pearl because you can bezel it with the same amount of delica. So you need to bezel, you, you need to start the bezel with 22 delicas and then add 11 more. And if you are bezeling a Rivoli, then two rows on the front, two rows on the back. If you are bezeling a Chaton, then you can decide if you want one or two rows on the front with correct thread tension. Even one row is enough. If you need any help with bezeling, then please download the free tutorial from beadingschool.com called Forget Me Not. It will show you all the tricks that you need. And hi, Cheryl. And 
Thank you, Corinne. Corinne likes my necklace and Belinda, Eleanor, Bernadette. Claire got here on time. Oh, Katy would love to see a Zuzi box for the Academy. What a good idea. Zuzi, please take notes. <laughs> Deb, Emmy, thank you, Claire, and hi, Nancy, and other Facebook user friends, and Mary. Hi, everyone. So, uh, so today we are we are beating the marigold, and let's see what do you need if you would like to beat this with us together. So starting from the middle, you will need an eight millimeter cabochon. As I said, it can be a chaton or it can be a rivoli. Then you need Miyuki Delica beads in size 11. You need Miyuki round seed beads, sizes 15 and 11. Here, uh, Zuzi used two different colors for the size 15s. I also used two different colors, but it's up to you if you would like to have one or two colors. Then you will also need some two millimeter round pearls, some four millimeter fire polished uh, check glass beads, and three millimeter preciosa bicon beads. If you would like to stock up on anything, then everything is available at beadingschool.com and yeah uh, these are bead shapes that we use week by week and that are usually available in every beader's basic stash to make sure that you can join right away so hi jennifer and cynthia thank you cynthia and Wendy, Kimberly, Crisol, Connie, Robin. Hello, everyone. Many of you are mentioning my necklace, and thank you so much. It is a variation of the Jai Summer motif that we were playing with earlier this week. You can already watch the recording of Coffee Time with Erica on YouTube and on Facebook. And what I did was that I shared my virtual beading board, the program that I use for illustrating the patterns with you on screen. And then we were coming up with different options together that how can you arrange and how can you combine the same motif into lots and lots of different different jewels. And already I see Jai Salmers popping up. I have to mention Kata's beautiful ring. It is, it is a wonderful piece of jewel. Thank you for sharing that. That was the first Jai Salmer that I have seen in the group. And thank you for everyone who placed an order. We have 12% discount for these uh, Slim Navets five times 14 millimeters uh, at beadingschool.com. I have to say that we pretty much ran out of them. There are still some colors available, but there is a new batch coming on Monday when I finished the tutorial actually quite some time in advance. Then I had a feeling that you ladies will love it. So just after that, I placed another order and it came in this week, I think on Thursday. So the team will spend the, <laughs> the next two days packing and counting. So on Monday, we will upload some more if you would like to get more and play with the shape. Or if you missed some colors. Oh, and Katie says she already got the navets. Oh, Katie, then I'm really curious that how will you use them? Cheryl loves Marigold and will make it after the class. She has lots of UFOs. And hi, Joyce, and hi, Kara. And <laughs> let's get started, I say. Are your bezels ready? I was so lucky because actually I asked Susie 
to help me a bit with with uh, beading and preparing variations of motifs. So she actually prepared some <laughs> pre-bezeled cabochons for me. <laughs> and I really, really appreciate it, Susie. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> so, and hi Rosalinda, and hi Jackie, and Mary, it's Mary's first time, exciting, let's say a big warm welcome to Mary, Mary, if you will have any questions how it's working, then let us know, okay, either me or someone from the gang here will answer your question, Nancy, Jeannie, and Ula says she finished her bezel. So let's get started, I say. <laughs> so on picture one, on illustration one, I already have the peyote bezel cabochon. And in step one, I am adding Miyuki size 11 Delica beads into the ditch between the middle beads in the peyote bezel. It means that I'm starting out, my thread is exiting a delica bead that is exactly in the middle of the bezel. And then I pick up a delica, it will, it will, it will uh, be here in this so-called ditch. And I bead through the next delica that is in the same row than the bead that I am exiting at the moment. And thank you, Cheryl. Cheryl says that I, she had an echo and I don't I know why, so I switched it off. And Nancy would like to see the back of the bezel first. So I bezeled a preciosa pure Zuzi bezeled <laughs> Zuzi bezeled a preciosa pure ruby cabochon for me. And when I'm bezeling chatons, I don't know how exactly Zuzi did, uh, did it, but when I'm bezeling chatons, then first I make the back with two rows of uh, Miyuki round 15s, and then I switch to the front, and then I add one row of Miyuki round 15s. When I'm bezeling Rivoli's, then I start with the front, I add two rows, I switch to the back, and then I close it with two more rows. But with chatons, I found that this works better for me. And Echo should be all right now. Please let me know. Joanna is here. Helena. Uh, the bezel, Robin is asking for the bezel. Please go to beadingschool.com and download the Forget Me Not tutorial. It's a free one between the beading tutorials. So it shows you step by step how to bezel the cabochon. And hi, Sherry. Okay. So let's continue with the beads in the ditch. Since I am adding beads in between the beads in this row, then I will add 11 pieces. So always exiting a bead in the middle row, picking up a new delica, and then beading through the next bead in the same row. Jackie is asking, thank you, Susie, for the link. Jackie is asking for the uh, length of the thread. I have to admit, I'm never measuring. I always start with a wingspan of thread, of fire line, to be more specific. This is my favorite type of fire line. It's the black satin. 
in the 4LB 0.005 inch diameter or 0.12 millimeters for European folks. And I always start with about like that much how I open my eyes, open my, open my arms. And usually there is not much left. So it's not a length that I would be, feel sorry for if I have to get rid of like 10, 15 centimeters at the end. And if I need more, then anyway, it's not so great to work with a longer thread because it kind, kind of wears off if you pull it so many times to, uh, through the beads. So it's better if you finish a link span and if you are working on something bigger, something more complicated, that you add a new wingspan of thread. Zuzi has some measurements. She says that it's about 50 centimeter for a bezel. That the fireline eater part is the decorative part, indeed. And hi, Lutka, nice to see you. I'm adding now the last bead in the ditch. And then I continue until I can bead through the second delica that I added in this step. So I want to start step two after exiting the second delica that I have added in step one. I don't start right away after the first because then there would be like pressure on the first bead and it could deform the motif. Helena is asking, please, uh, for the material list, you can go to novonhastobeadalone.com and you can download the tutorial and check the material list. So I have here now kind of a cogwheel with this beautiful ruby pure cabochon in the middle. I love it. I used it already in so many designs since I got the first one. You haven't seen them all yet. <laughs> and in step two, I'm switching to the two millimeter true two round pearls and I'm adding these two millimeter true to round pearls one by one in between the delicas added in step one. And hi, Stenka, ahoy. <laughs> I hope you will also, you can also beat this motive later. So here I'm trying to keep good thread tension to make sure that my motif is not floppy. If you, if you feel that your thread tension is not that tight, then you can always go one more time around through all the beads to make sure that it gets nice and sturdy or Actually, what I really like to do that you can add a filigree component on the back of your on the back of your motif, and that gives it structure and will also protect it from wear and tear. Oh, Katy will also use a nice pure chaton to make these earrings. <laughs> Yeah, the pure chatons, the ones that don't have the foil on the back, they have this see-through effect. With some colors it's more visible, with some colors it's less visible, but it looks great when you have an earring because if it turns a little bit, then you don't see the foil. And also, if you are making some ornaments, we were beading the crystal snowflake around Christmas. 
And many beaders actually finished it as an ornament for their Christmas trees or a decoration in their house. And then it gets very handy that you can make it double-sided. Okata is also using a, using a pure chaton. She went with Erin it. That's such a beautiful one. I'm really curious how will you finish it. And then we have Facebook user friend asking if she can substitute two to round beads for fire polished. My best guess is that you can, but since we have a limited time to prepare a tutorial, then we can't test everything, every possibility. So if you would like to make a substitute, then please try it. I, I love it when you personalize the jewels. And, but you need to test, and if there are any adjustments needed, then you will have to figure it out. Please try it, and please share your results with the Beading School Club. We love to know if, some, if a substitute works or not. Anika is using Emerald Pure Chaton. <laughs> Mary ordered another box after she used the one that she she got. Thank you for your order, Mary, and enjoy using them. Zuzi is hoping for a restock. A restock is coming, and actually there are altogether 42 different colors of pure chatons available at Preciosa, but they did not have everything in stock right away. We ordered all of them, so there will be more colors coming later. <laughs> so I finished step two. And now I will continue with step three. And in step three, I will be adding groups of round 15. This is going to be my second color of round 15. So I'm using the magenta. Round 15, Delica, round 15. And then I bead through the next two millimeter round pearl. Again, round 15, Delica, round 15. Sorry, I'm adjusting the lights a little bit because I'm not 100% sure that the video is of the best possible quality. So yeah, round 15, Delica, round 15 and then beading through the next two millimeter round pearl. Sarah's using the ruby. <gasps> Hi, Lisa, thank you. Danielle, thank you so much. She says, I'm using true to fire polish and it seems to work so far. <laughs> so, adding the groups of beads in between the two millimeter round bars. By the way, just like Susie, I made my motif into a pair of earrings or well, now I'm completing my pair of earrings. However, since I ran out of crystal or um, preciosa beads in the three millimeter size, you might have seen my <laughs> post feeling miserable, looking for the last that I needed for another important design. <laughs> uh, so uh, while Zuzi used Aurum bicons on the edge, my motif came out more turquoise, more greenish, bluish, because I used blue zircon preciosa bicons on the edge. So this is how it looks like if you switch the colors. But 
I finished the earring exactly in the same way as Susie did. So I have this simpler ear earring findings because somehow I felt usually I really like to bring up things and add fun stuff. But I think this was a really a good choice for it because it's decorative enough. So it's just a simple earring hook. And I used, just as Susie did, I used this Maharaja Square crystal connector. And yeah, I was also like saving it a bit. I have two pairs at home at the moment. And some of you were talking before the broadcast that uh, that uh, you are sometimes saving the components and wait for the perfect moment, but let's let's not keep our components in our drawers. Let's not like wait for that perfect moment because the result can be like then really heartwarming, and then we can actually wear those pretty components. So. <laughs> I think then they give us even more pleasure. Yeah, I had an express delivery, but actually, well, it's a bit complicated because I've had to finish also something else. And I don't have that many of the Orum icons and... I have a secret project where I started to use them and I had to continue with them. And here they were not like 100% necessary. I, I, I could switch them to another color. So I'm saving the bicons for, for that secret project. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I had two boxes on the way to me, one from the treasury and one from a fellow dear beater who sent me Orum Bicons and one actually didn't arrive yet. So I hope that it was not lost by, by the Dutch post office. Susie says she used everything from the Maharaja box and Faye says she lies, likes it with the blue zircon. And Sarah already has a motive. Uh, yeah, 20 from the four millimeter fire polished. I'm sorry that it's not enough for a pair of earrings. We actually like, it was for another design <laughs> originally and Zuzi additionally come, uh, came up with this one. So <gasps> I switched my beads. So in the box, you always find like enough for the two signature jewels that come the tutorial the, the for which the tutorials come with the box so in this case it's the big cheetor gar motif and with and the and the dry summer and the rest because we come up with lots of motifs for the box additionally so you can choose but sometimes you have to choose because it's not enough for for everything Or you can like make a pendant if it's not enough for a full pair of earrings or a centerpiece for a bracelet, for example. Actually, Gina of Orchid and Opal will also have an additional tutorial 
for the box. So I'm really looking forward to that one. So you will have like many, many, many options to use what you have received. So I added the last pico of round 15, Delica and round 15. And I will also now continue until I'm exiting the second new group. I'm never starting from the first group. I'm always starting from the second one. So that's how I finish step three. And let's look into step four. In step four, we are going to use the four millimeter fire polished beads. So I am exiting the Delica in the middle of a group of beads that I have just added. And then I pick up a four millimeter fire polished bead and I bead through the next Delica that is in the middle of a group added in the previous step. And this is how I bead all around the motif. I pick up a four millimeter fire polished bead and then I bead through the next Delica. And Wendy says the bracelet Gina made was beautiful. Indeed, indeed. I have a picture here of that. Let me let me share it with you because it's it's really something that I think we need to see again. <laughs> it's super beautiful it really the shape how she put together the little navets and how she put together the peyote bezelled cabochons is really like out of some some fairy tale and out of the palace of a maharaja she's super talented it's beautiful so she said that she is probably making a tutorial for it. We are sending her some extra novels, so it's possible to make it possible. So I can't wait to see it. And Sherry says, I never used the Orum before. I think I need more of this. It looks so good with all the motifs this month. It is a very elegant and luxurious Luxurious one, I think. And hi, Shirley. Good to see you. <laughs> Nicolini is also hoping for a tutorial from Gina. And I think everyone. <laughs> so tell me, ladies, how are you going to use today's motif. Are you going to make it into an earring, into a pendant, maybe a focal of a bracelet? You can attach it to a bead embroidered piece, for example, or add it to a filigree. And tell me, I'm super curious, will you use one of the precious components with it? Or will you finish it in a simpler way with with only an earring hook. I'm encouraging everyone to go for the pretties, go for the pretty findings. Enjoy them today. Enjoy wearing them. And let's not leave all the pretties for the drawers. And Sarita is also a first time beader. Welcome, Sarita. 
Thanks for joining us today. We meet every week already for two years, since nearly two years since COVID started, to make sure that no one has to be the one. And every week we work on a different design that I that I uh, designed specifically for this workshop with some basic bead shapes so you can join right away and you can download the tutorial from no one has to be the long.com. So I hope that you will join us again next week. Sherry says she's going to make earrings. Oh, Mary is going to make beauty, uh, earrings with the beautiful findings. Joanna too. Ginny says, talking about saving things reminds me of my mother who is 89 years old and still saving something for good. I always had to laugh and encourage her to use it. Kathy says, earrings with a chaton and maybe also a component from this box or a previous one. You can indeed like often go back to a previous box and I'm loving it how many of you are actually using sterinite colors or sterinite beads for Maharaja jewels and it's very interesting to see these meetings of teams. <laughs> Oh, Sarah's making earrings with the mandala flower ear stud. Cheryl doesn't have more room. Cheryl wants to move, right? <laughs> Jan will make earrings, but needs more orum bicons. The team is packing preciosa day and night, by the way. I placed a huge huge, huge order before the end of the year. So we are going to have everything uh, restocked, what Preciosa had, and we ran out of them, and many, many, many new colors. <laughs> I think my colleagues were a little bit shocked after they saw the order that I have placed. Please tell them that you absolutely needed them, that we absolutely needed all those colors, all those 60 new colors of Preciosa bicons in all the different sizes. <laughs> I feel a bit bad. <laughs> so please, please, please tell Andrea she's with you tomorrow during lunch break, the Beating School Academy lunch break, that you really needed those 60 colors, okay? Promise. <laughs> <laughs> and Zuzi says I was actually thinking this can be a nice part of a necklace when you connect more elements together including the crystal connectors that would be super nice Jackie says she's uh, suffering from saving the precious components Joyce will be making earrings Chris is going to make a pendant Oh, Christ, thinking about a bracelet for girl. Kata's making earrings. Oh, Sherry asks, are there any marigold rings yet? That's also a possibility. <laughs> Hi. Oh, Diane is in Mexico. Enjoy. <laughs> Cynthia says, yes, all of us need those beautiful bicons. <laughs> Mary needs more of the pure chatons. <laughs> Kata has a good point, she says, but the team should not be shocked after we ruined the mirrors for the advent craziness. <laughs> <laughs> there were some leftovers, but we also needed, we, we, we really needed those new colors. <laughs> mm, and now, 
Let's finally start step five and we add the little icons on the edge. This is a really good part. I think this is a nice trick to remember also for the future, how Zuzi designed the picots. I like how she fixed them to make sure that they are sturdy. So pick. Uh, you are exiting a fire polished bead and then you can pick up around 15, a bicon and sorry, around 11, bicon round 15. It's easier to imagine how it will look like if you let the beads fall where they are supposed to go. And then you bead back through the bicon and through the round 11. This is how it looks like at the moment. Then you need to bead through the delica in the opposite direction. So towards the fire polished bead that you are exiting. When you pull it, then you already see that the bicone is turning cross, uh, turning uh, by 90 degrees. So it will look like a picot should look like. And then you repeat the thread pass through the round 11, bicon round 15, back through the bicon and the round 11, and into the next four millimeter fire polished bead. So, while we were beading around and around, then the holes of the beads that we used so far always were parallel with each other. And this time we turned the round 11 and the three millimeter bicon beads sideways. So they are in a different position than all the other beads in the, best, in the uh, motif. And I think it's a super clever solution. Faye also said that it's very clever and Joyce also thinks that it's cool. And Ula loves the ruby chatons. They are really almost pink like real rubies, right? It's totally like gemstone feel. It's so beautiful. Cynthia says, just think what the warehouse is going to think on the next advent calendar. They better be prepared for all of us around Christmas time again. <laughs> we will be well prepared, I promise. <laughs> so we need to repeat this and uh, around and around. Uh, around and around, over and over, all around the motif. So I pick up around 11, I pick up a bicon bead, and I pick up around 15. Then I let them fall. And I bead back through the bicon and the round 11. I pass through the delica in the opposite direction towards the fire polished bead that I am exiting. I was exiting at the beginning. I repeat the thread path through the round 11 bicon round 15. Again, back towards the center of the motif through the bicon and the round 11. And I bead through the next fire polished bead. So I already have two picots here. So, Ladies, does anyone have a question about this part? Check out the tip. I'm glad I actually also, 
I, I have never done it this way, so I'm super happy that I learned this trick from Susie. And I can imagine that if you would like to go bigger with this motif, then you could connect the round 15 seed beads that are holding the bicons to each other with a sequence of beads or with something bigger, maybe a six millimeter Preciosa bicon would fit. That's maybe worth to try it if someone would like to experiment. Susie says she's glad that you like this solution. And I'm super happy that that Susie designed this two new jewels for us, the Lotus last week and also this week the Marigold. She's naming her India-inspired designs after flowers while I am naming the jewels that I designed after royal cities in, uh, in India. Zuzi is naming her designs after, after flowers that are connected to India. And I think it's a very nice theme. Oh, 15 millimeter bicon. I wanted to say, sorry if I said 15 millimeter, I wanted to say six millimeter. <laughs> there are, by the way, big bicon beads, but usually from pressed glass, not from, not from crystal glass. In the meanwhile, we just finished the, we had a little challenge for you. And this week the deadline passed for, for the Starry Night Mini Challenge. And I was looking at the submissions today and it's really, really nice to see your creations. You've submitted beautiful jewels, very inspiring. And next week, during coffee time, I will announce the winners who will win uh, each of them. One book that is, that is connected to Van Gogh, or previous theme or previous source of inspiration, was the Starry Night painting from Vincent Van Gogh. And in the Starry Night mini challenge, you could win one of two books. One book is a collection of Vincent's letters and the other one is a compilation of his paintings. So on Tuesday, you will know, we will know that who won the books. And Sherry's asking if we will see all the entries. Indeed, I plan to share them all on the Facebook page so we can all admire them. So that's going to. <laughs> and Susie says that each of the flowers that she chose as names for the jewels are very important to India. Some are sacred, another vital or decorative. So nice that you actually that you that you that you searched for flowers that are indeed like significant in India. <laughs> and 
Claire says, just want to let you know that I used 3mm bicons in step 3. The tension looked a bit tight, but it evened out in step 4 as I added the fire polished 4mm ones. I think a 3mm round would work too. Thank you for sharing that, Claire. Kata is asking if there will be more flowers coming, Zuzi. Good question, good question. I'm slowly running out of thread. So I will have to connect some more. <laughs> <laughs> and Zuzi says, I have done the research, loved to learn more. We are all lifelong students, indeed. And Bonnie, is that you? I'm asking because of the all capitals. <laughs> and welcome. Glad that you joined, <laughs> even if later. <laughs> Indeed, Bonnie. Hi. And Susie says, I have one more in the pocket. Always. <laughs> Do you want to share with us the name of the third one that you will name after, after a flower that is important in India? I'm curious. I had I need to add two more bicons. I really hope that my thread will be enough and I don't have to add new thread because of the last two centimeters, but it can happen. And Zuzi says that I'm thinking it's going to be Helianthus, a sunflower. <laughs> Sounds like a nice name, Zuzi. And Kata says, I'm pretty happy with my motif. With the Arenid Pure Chaton in the middle. I'm curious. <laughs> so I think I will have to admit a defeat as I'm running out of thread. Funny that it's today that we were talking about uh, the sufficient length that you need. And today I ran out, I think it's the first that the first time or maybe the second that I ran out of thread during a class. But, well, that's a beater's life, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> so, oh, only one bike on to go. <gasps> <laughs> Cindy also ran out of thread. We are aligned. <laughs> so ladies, do you have any, any, any questions about today's motive or anything that comes to your mind? Faye's asking, so a wingspan and a hand maybe? <laughs> Well, this is, I have to say, this is, I did not start it and uh, it was intended, the bezel was intended to something else. So, so yeah, I will add a bit and then finish the motive later. So ladies, let me know if you have any, any questions left. And tomorrow... My uh, friend and team member Andrea will be waiting for you at lunch break, at the usual Beating School Academy lunch break. She's looking forward 
And then on Tuesday, I'm going to share the pictures and the winners of the of the Starry Night contest. And next week, Friday, we are going to take a break. There won't be there won't be next week and no one has to be it alone. So I will be off for a couple of days. So next week I will have to come up with some homework for you before I <laughs> I would go offline for a few days. So I am really looking forward to seeing your marigold flowers in the beating school club. Please keep them coming, post the pictures, uh, ask your questions if you have anything uh, anything that comes to your mind. I'm also curious that how will you finish the motifs, that how, uh, how will you play with the different motifs, how will you combine them with other components or on their own or even with uh, bead embroidery, there are really, really lots and lots of possibilities. And as I see Honey, I want to mention for my Dutch friends living here in the Netherlands, a couple of months ago in September, October, we were getting inspired by Art Nouveau. And today I saw an advertisement that the museum in The Hague, the National Museum in The Hague, will have an Art Nouveau exhibition with the paintings of Mucha, the most famous Art Nouveau painter. So it's maybe something worth to check out. Maybe it's not a maybe, it will be worth to check it out. So thank you so much everyone for today and wishing you a nice weekend. Keep the inspiration coming and enjoy beating and have lots of fun with your marigold pendants and earrings. Bye-bye.